16th meeting of Bethel Select Board. Uh, first item of business is to approve the agenda. So, do we have any additions or changes to the agenda? Um, only to note that the July 23rd meeting minutes weren't in our packets. Yeah. So, we probably can't approve those. Probably take that. Yeah, they made it before, but they didn't make it in your packet. So, I wanted to make one uh, change. Um, after the Green Lantern lease agreement review and approve, I want to put a quick executive session in there so we can discuss the, any questions um, so we can decide that before we do our vote. Okay, so you want to discuss and then, and then come back out. Go in the executive session. Just and come right. back out. Yeah, and then come back out. And that's it. Is that going to take place of uh, the place of the executive session for people down below? Yeah, I think that's I, have, I think that was. I think that was for that, so that'll take place of those stuff. Okay. on getting some speed limit signs up on the Little Hill Brook Road. Um, when I was here in June, uh, it, what, I, what I think I heard was that uh, there might have been a delay in, in order to get some signs in the new budget, but that kind of the places had been identified where those signs should be. Um, and there's one sign that's up <laughs> right off of Camper Road as you go on the Campbell Road, which I noticed just a few days ago, but it's 35 miles an hour, and that traffic ordinance designates that whole length of road at 25 miles an hour. So I'm a little confused. I just want to kind of understand where we are, when we might expect signs to get up, and why we have a 35 mile an hour sign up in a good place, but the wrong sign. The right. speed. So that goes back to the, the traffic study or the, the, the sign study inventory that we're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, your road you put on as a higher priority because you knew that it was already in the ordinance to have a speed, it was a posted speed limit. Um, Al and I will be ordering signs this week. So I'm getting together kind of an inventory of how many we need. And originally, we're just going to look and see what we had in our inventory okay. and see if we had anything like usable. I think that was our discussion last time. To see if there was anything that was actually salvageable that we could put out there. There's nothing that meets the reflectivity uh, and quality that was that's required. So the, the intent is to do um, an initial sign order this week, which would include whatever the speed limit is posted by ordinance. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely make sure that's another piece of this inventory to just verify that what's out there is correct. Because it sounds as though that may not be the case. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely base this off of the ordinance, because, and that's what we're basing our inventory on. Because, because it doesn't really do us any good to say we need signs all over the world because the ordinance doesn't allow for them anyway. Um, but what we'll do is, we'll, in this first quarter of signs, we'll be getting speed limit signs for that roadway, um, whatever that speed actually is. I don't remember. I have to look at it. I think it's, it's 25 miles an hour for 4.94 miles okay. all the way from 25. Yeah. Okay. Up to Camper. So that's what we'll post to that. Uh, I'm actually, I've got a big large amount in my office if you're welcome to come in, but it's got dots all over it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's an inventory of what signs we actually need. Uh, then we're going to go out and see what we have and fill in the holes. But yours are on the top priority because they're missing. So um, I can't guarantee those signs will be here by next week, but we're going to order them this week. I, I just, uh, you know, I've, I've, this is my fourth visit now to a select, a select board meeting about this starting way back in October. And again, I just would like to see, sure. I'd like to see kind of get to our sure. We were bound our with because, we were originally bound because of the budget. Right. And we said July 1st, we've got to kind of get mm -hmm. moving on this. And it's obvious, but we're trying. Okay. 
So the API can then you'll be the first, one of the first to get your site done. Great. I've so got some I, other a couple other rows that needs to be getting to Okay. So I might stop in some time just to take a look at that. That would yeah, be it's great. just a big map of the town, it's got okay. lots all over the place. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. So where I, does that begin then, right? At the bottom of the bill where it comes off of oh, uh, if you turn road. off uh, you, you know, on the river road you turn right. you're going through Stockbridge right. and take a right hand turn yeah. and it, well, I call it the line bridge, I don't know the number of that bridge. But from that point, straight for nearly five miles, straight up through Wilmingville, through Olympus Four Corners to look at Camp Brook at the other end of uh, Campbell Brook. That's all traffic ordinance that were established in 1989. And that's the thing, yeah, that's the area we're concentrating on the okay. stuff that actually happened to work with. Because all the others, it, it, it's impossible to determine what they okay. could have. So please be patient. We're getting there. We're getting there. I didn't even take this to talk to you about it. But we do have the funds in the budget for okay. matter of getting the, the full uh, order prepared and set up. And you know, I, I do want to say, I, mean, I do think that the speeds have gone down a little bit up through my neighborhood. Um, I think I, I told you back in June, we kind of had a neighborhood gathering and we kind of talked about speeds and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, there. We're, I'm still seeing, I'm home all the time, so I, I have the, the joy of having cars go by. And, you know, and trucks and others are just totally blow it off. And, you know, I have the occasional ATV riders that go by through. Now, again, I know they're not even supposed to be on the roadways up past my house, but I would like to at least be able to say to them, listen, I, I don't have a problem with an ATV, but just, Please, 25 miles an hour, go slow. You yeah. know, and I, I right now I have nothing. I have no way to kind of, you know, I, I have no credibility. <laughs> What's yeah, you don't want to show words. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll get it done. Thank we'll you. We'll get it done. As soon as we get the sign order, they, I think it usually takes about 10 days or something to get up with the post and everything. And then right. as the guys can get out there, they'll start replacing them. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. This should be the last time. Thanks. Thanks, That was actually on, on my list to bring up later on. <laughs> so, okay, any other uh, public comment, inquiry? Well, I came in late. I just want to make sure nobody else has something. No, no, these are all scheduled. Uh, oh, it looks like speed is on our minds. <laughs> 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 Uh, this is my first time coming in Can to you, uh, talk. I'm sorry, Danny Dover, I'm up on Camp Road. Okay. Um, so it's my first time coming in mm -hmm. to talk about um, you know public safety on, on Camp Brook Road. And I've been living there for 40 years, and I'd say it's probably about the worst I've, I've seen it. Um, and I'm, I'm just really concerned. Um, and it just seems like um, it's got to be the third highest volume of traffic in the town. Uh, in terms of towns after Route 12 and 107, it's a connector road. It's on the state list of uh, bicycle routes. You know, so you have bicycles going up there. You've got motorcycles. And then the demographic has changed. So we have young families with kids, with pets, people walking their dogs. Um, tractors are still on there. Um, it's just uh, waiting for disaster. I mean, there's already been several serious accidents. Uh, fortunately, none in the next the last two or three years, but it just feels like it's a matter of time. And I feel like I'm taking my life into my hands every time I back out onto that road. Um, so um, I, I'm, I'm coming asking for help, uh, short-term help, and then also long-term help. Um, short-term help, I realize that you can't cut a constable into a million pieces and put them on all these different roads, but being one of the busiest highways, it seems like it should be a priority, and if we could just do it a couple of times, one hour in the evening, um, you know, one hour in the morning, you know, you know, during one week, that would have such a damping effect on a short-term basis. I realize it doesn't last forever, but um, it's not just out-of-staters. There are a lot of commuters, a lot of long-distance commuters that use that road, and, um, you know, sometimes even like at 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, if someone goes by there, you know, just unbelievable speeds. But um, that's, what I, that's what I would suggest if it was possible. Just be like that, that presence. Just, just once or twice could have a huge effect, in my, in my opinion. Um, 
Where so, about you, you live on? I'm three miles up on uh, right across from Dunham Hill Road, Dunn Road, oh. where the broken down barn is. Uh, so, and actually, if they parked right practically across the street from our house, because that's the one flat, straight section of road where people, down, they're down. coming down the hill or they pass, they'll try passing right there. Um, but that would be a great place to get people uh, to slow down. And, um, oh, yeah, well, that brings me to my next point. And I'll come back just like you have. <laughs> I'd like to start the ball rolling, whatever traffic study is needed or whatever. I personally feel that that road, uh, the bottom two thirds of that road could stand to have the speed limit reduced from 40 to 35. I think that would be reasonable to ask that. People aren't gonna go 35, but if it's posted at 35, maybe you get people to go 45. And you know, we could live with that, but people are not going 45 now, <clears throat> 55, 60. So, um, well, that's my concern. Well, it's quite a complicated process. I know. To happen. I know it is. You know, Greg can explain it, but if you're, yeah. if you're not sure what it is, but you, know, you have to do the speed studies to be able to support the changes in the speed study and make sure that that speed is acceptable you know, in, mm -hmm. that, in that section of the road. So it's kind of a double edged sword. Um, it potentially could go the other way. Well, I'm willing to take that chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling, well, I don't know how they base yeah, it, yeah. what they base it all on, but um, uh, when was, hasn't there already been, there have been traffic studies on that road many times before. Has there been one recent enough? I'm not sure when the last one was, but they, yeah, you're right, they had to, they did to do establish the speed limits to begin with. Um, they had to have done a mm -hmm. speed study. I don't, I, I don't really know when the last one was done. I've, I've done a lot of research in the last week or so about speed studies and setting speed limits in towns. Um, you can actually, the state will actually let the municipality do the speed study themselves uh, to a point. Um, when you really start talking about really high speed limits or low speed limits, then you have to get professionals in there to help out. So, uh, but otherwise, it's, it's something that it just takes time. And some effort to, to do an actual speed study. They, looking at multiple elements is what. So it's it's a whole uh, matrix of different things that you're supposed to look at, and you just judge each one based off of kind of what you're seeing over a, a, a normal amount of time, or 100 trips, or something like that. And at the end of it, it kind of spits out what the the speed limit is supposed to be or could be at that point. And one piece that I think Paul was alluding to was that it, one piece of that and a large piece of that is what the, the traveling public. Feel the, the public sort of create the safe speed mm -hmm. because they feel that they're safe to do that, and that's the speed they're running. So that that's what I think Paul was talking about is that if if, one, if the numbers come back and it finds that the average driver is going 60, and they're able to navigate, and these are just numbers, yeah. uh, and they're able to navigate that safely, yeah. in, in their opinion, then that speed limit could actually go up. Well do, well, do they take into consideration what the use, what the uses are? Yeah, they, they do. They do. Like bicycles, or yeah. the fact that there's no shoulder. Yes, and the type of road is the collector, is the road is the residential, you know, things see. like that. So that's all taken into account. Uh -huh. It is. It is. Okay. Uh, so that's something that actually we did. We can do in house to a point uh, with our local roads. That would be a little more. I want to get the state involved a little more with that. Yeah, I realize. The road, yeah. The traffic, the volume, yeah. so high on that. Right. Uh, but we are, I am working with two rivers, the, the local planning commission, and they've got these speed counters. I don't know if you saw the yeah. speed counters out here, um, but I'm working with them to try to get a hold of three or four of those to place on different roads mm -hmm. so that we can start collecting some data. Mm -hmm. So we have some hard data to see. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's probably anybody on Camperick Road who would uh, disagree with what I've just been saying. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Um, but we have to make sure that we have the, you know, the data to back up. Of course, yeah. You know, it, it can't be based on. Because what, what the state has actually said is if you set it too low, people aren't going to do that anymore. Right. And so they're going to drive it where they want to drive. So you want to set the speed limit to be somewhere where it's reasonable for everybody. Yeah. Because um, being too low could actually be a safety issue too. Sure. Because yeah. people are, they feel comfortable coming down and there's somebody going super, super slow, it could be a, another issue. Well, that's why I talked about, you know, it's the bottom of the road. Right. I mean, the top of the road could stay. Sure. And you yeah. can do it in seconds. Yeah. You can do it in seconds. Right. Yeah. Um, 
So what about the idea of, uh, is there a possibility of getting a constable presence on the road? Yeah, I thought about that. And we also try one of the speed signs. And do we have one that moves around? We have two that move around. They're badly upgraded. Um, he can move one out there if we think that would help. Yeah. I don't know what he's got in program. Does the one here collect data? They, they all collect data. Yeah, so there's actually a preliminary piece of our own in-house study is the Maybe even have a couple locations along the road to try it out on it in either direction. Right. Just, it, yeah, it could be something. Well, like you it. said there was a problem because the batteries run out. They run out pretty quickly, but yeah. depending on how much it's used, you know, yeah. like down here, they run out pretty quickly because there's a lot of traffic, so it's yeah. flashing all the time. Right. Um, but they are, we can move them around. So if we want to place one out there and just see what it would do, set it to the speed limit and see what it would do and maybe collect some data from it, we could do that. Well, keep that location in mind. I think that would be a really right. good place to start. Yeah, and again, a lot of this is, is just boots on the ground kind of thing. Yeah. What this, this study is to go out there and, and observe what's going on right. and jot down what you're seeing and what, you know, you need a, a radar gun, which you don't have, of course, but yeah. that's yeah. another piece of that is a tight reflector of that. What are we That would be great. I have one in my building currently. It's not mine. It's AARPs, but I think should they would, if we ask sure. them, might allow us to yeah. use it. That, that's part. That's just part of the, the log sheet when you're doing all the different elements and you're trying to figure out what the speed is. Um, you want to know what people are doing. And then there's a mean angle. You want to look at the average. You want to look at some other numbers just to kind of see what that range actually looks like. Because, uh, again, a large piece of this is what does the normal traveling public, what do they feel comfortable driving that road, navigating that road? And that's usually, usually close to what the speed limit is supposed to be, according to the state. This is all state information. Well, I was gonna I was just gonna say depending on where you're you know on the flats, on the straightaways, you know, people would feel safe going forty, say well it should be forty, but then you have all the turns, whether right. it's on Campbrook Road or Lily Billbrook Road, and they're you know, Which I think is why you second it so, out and you right. kinda I mean to me I would second it but I would also do it as a whole and just see how everything worked out. You can see trends. Uh, you might have a segment that's got a lot of lines and then you've got a straight line. So maybe it, it works itself out that there is some sort of an average speed limit. But so it's what, uh, just of interest on, on Camper Road, it is in the traffic warrants, it's 40 miles an hour from the bottom of Camper Road until you get to Campbell Road. And then from Campbell to the Rochester line, it's 30 miles an hour. What? From, do you know where the Campbell Road hits Camp Road, way yeah. at the very top? From that point till you get to the Rochester line, it's 30 miles an hour. That's what it's, you know why? Because that was before the road was done. Exactly. So what's it, what's it posted at there? I didn't know that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So again, this so, is... And, and again, and then that's, as you, as you said, as Mo said, that's before the, before the road was constructed over the mountain. Exactly. And it had, Giving yeah, 30 would have been too fast to go through that. Which is why we're doing it so, so which, part of it does show that the ordinance, as you are as yeah. you're all saying, is is out of date yeah. and is not kept up. But there, you know, there are other pressures that have happened in all of these years, which is more traffic, people trying to get to and from work, traveling distances, and they're they're in a big hurry. You know, so there's there's a lot of moving pieces that have to be kind of. And again, the the, the methodology that they give me, the spreadsheet or whatever, it's very it's very involved. There's a lot to it, so it's not just one or two little things. It, it actually takes it's an engineering document, so it takes a lot of different points of data and puts it all together and spits out some number that they, they deem to be relevant. But to your point, I think what we need to do, and this is why we're doing our site tour, is, is to verify that what is in the ordinance is actually on the ground. Mm -hmm. So if that does change there, then you have to have a sign that shows that change. Actually, I've never, I've never seen a 30 mile an hour no. sign up there. Right. So, it probably got knocked out when they yeah. constructed the new road. Yeah. 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 But it also leads us to, you know, it sounds as though that road needs to be reanalyzed mm -hmm. from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. And uh, doing an ordinance change is not that difficult. We would have to do it anyway. I have some other things for the, for the, the highway ones that need to be changed. Um, but we just have to have data to support it. So 
I mean, there are a couple of sections you can't look up until the top of the point. Right. That first uh, curves that you come around. And if you drop down, if you go over the top and stop dropping down, that whole first section is basically. No, back to that one. Yeah, 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 various curves. Yeah, yeah, of course it's yeah. it's yeah, and I'm not, I'm not sure that you might have to really do a little research to find yeah. out when the last traffic study was done and how it was done and what, what came from that. Mm -hmm. uh, the ordinance should reflect the traffic study. Mm -hmm. So that might have been a long time ago. But that mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me if you got that if you're gonna have that thing for a while. I'll, I'll ask them if they're I mean, the okay. intention was to do some speed studies through the downtown right. section um, okay. during during different events and just during normal. And so I'd want to ask them and get right. their permission because they've sort of lumped it to BRI as a, you know, we want to help you guys figure out what's going on. Um, but yeah, if they're, if they're open to it, I don't know if Danny would be willing to do some sporadic readings or. Sure. It's, a, it's usually pretty controlled. Everything is pretty controlled. They want it at certain times. They want it, yeah. you know, you want a certain kind of gas. Well, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, you want to have it, you know, in the early in the morning, two per going on all six. Right. Yeah. <coughs> so down the path of it, he says, yeah, absolutely, use, use our speed gun. What's, what's the protocol? What's the next? Is it Does it have to go through the town so that if you can show that you've done the proper? Um, I would say it's just gathering the raw data like the speed part of it, as long as whoever doing is following the protocol and procedure, they can gather the data. It's just the, the reports and the, the traffic study, if you will, will be through the town. It has to come through the town. But gathering the data can be, as long as we've got a, the parameters are set and those are followed. So it, what I'm hearing you say is you would, you would welcome volunteers who Yeah. yeah. If, if, <laughs> no, no, really, I'm serious. I mean, you know, if you said, we want readings between 8 and 10 a.m. on Thursday. I'll sit on my porch and The only thing I worry about is that it's, if it gets broken or whatever it is. Right. Well, it's another that if you're standing there pointing your radar and giving somebody like that to the stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm sure you have to be involved in that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we would be, uh, I wouldn't be in a town park. You could put us on as a traffic count. If not, why are you reading them? Because we're not authorized to do it. Right. Is that necessary? That's easier than setting up the strips on the road and no, just plucking the I mean, the strips we've got, those are, I mean, that I seems know, easier or not. It would be, the strips are nice because you just lay it out. Exactly. Okay. That's the most uh, complete. To, to your wall, we have to put signs out to follow these people see signs. Like, so, they still don't. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of defeats yeah. the purpose. These strips, people right over. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's what we look at doing then. Is maybe a more reasonable idea is to look at, uh, Two Rivers told me they had three or four sets of those strips, so maybe we could do them in three or four locations on that road. That would be just great. sort of see what, what sort of data. I'd love to see that. Okay. And start from there. Yeah. 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 And do you think um, the constable might be available? Uh, I'll definitely talk to him about that. Okay. We're having a little more presence. Over there. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Jose is a very patient. But thank you for all your input. Uh, Move along on that. So, Jose, you're up. Thank you. Uh, this is a lot of stuff. Well, we, you don't know me, but uh, I am the uh, member of the Energy Committee. And uh, I am here today to try to seek some guidance as far as how to proceed. Uh, we have uh, opportunity to put uh, electric vehicle charging station for free and we're not going to pay for it as long as we put a panel uh, with uh, 140 amps it's going to cost uh, $1,200 hopefully you agree with that uh, Eddie I mean Dave approximately right throw up the wire and the whole thing is going to cost about $2,800 we have some grant and some money we raised, so we would be short about $1,000. Probably we can meet it with more uh, fundraising. Nevertheless, the uh, charging station is a dumb charging station. Dumb because uh, it doesn't charge money, okay? Whoever comes into Bethel can come in there and plug his car up, okay? And the cost is obviously the town. The town is paying for that. 
for that. It could be significant depending on how much the, uh, the station is used. Uh, a little bit rough calculation is 140 amps. Basically, we have the station has two uh, sections. One is for the Tesla, that's 100 amp. Those guys like like to, to charge uh, fast. And the other one is for the uh, run of the mill uh, level two smaller cars, which is a 40 amp. So it's 140 amps. Two stations separate. Worst case scenario, those two stations are used eight hours a day. It's like 10 hours a day, full. Okay, so that's going to be about fifteen thousand dollars or so a year of cost of electricity. Okay, fifteen thousand. Those are, that would be the cost. Now, are they going to be used for fifteen hours? I don't know. Maybe not right now, but eventually they might, depending on what the electric car does. I mean, the electric car is growing. It's going to be about a million cells by another three or four years. Right now, it's about 750,000 cars. Uh, so anyway, that's the scenario. Uh, the advantage would be we bring people to Bethel. They will leave their car uh, charging, and they will be spending money in town. Uh, we are working on the solar Solutions for the town, the town hall, the fire department, etc. We'll be talking a little bit more about that. It looks very promising, very nice. Nevertheless, uh, we don't have that yet. Okay, so that is the that that is the first scenario. Okay, so I, I don't know how you feel about that. I don't know if you how you feel about electric cars in general. How you feel about bringing these people here. The average electric car owner has a master's degree. They're educated. They have an average of two times the, uh, the income of the national average. They're usually well-off people. They're intelligent. They're very green-minded people. Uh, do bringing people into Bethel is worth $15,000 a year. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I can see that the direction might be probably a not, right? For that scenario more, I don't know how the other members feel, but basically, if you don't mind, I'd like to expose the other two scenarios. And uh, if you tell me how you feel about the other one, two, or three, then I'll have a better idea how to proceed. We'll have a better idea how to proceed, okay? Uh, any questions on the first scenario? Any other questions? Sorry about that. Is there any way we can charge to have people charge their cars? We could put an honor system. Uh, you know, usually these people are very honest. Uh, they would uh, probably give, put the money in a box, and uh, we would probably recover more and more than what we're spending. Uh, that would be my guess. However, there is a risk because we are uh, basically appealing to the uh, uh, good will of the American people, which I believe is pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, that's why I came here, right? But anyway, that's, uh, that would be one option, though, you know. Uh, any other questions? So, so here, if you have a proposed location for this? Yeah, that would be that corner right there, about 40 feet from the main, uh, so that would be the cheapest way. And, uh, we would have assigned uh, electric vehicles uh, preferred and uh, a limit. So whoever, so the if you go, the, yeah, that's the, the left yeah. corner, there's or a little park. parking lot. Where you park today. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So that would be the location. Is there, um, so I, I'm assuming in today's world of technology, not being an electric car owner, I'm assuming there's some, some sort of internet app yep. or something that tells them would that yep. would Good question. put the Bethel yep. location on that so that somebody driving around yes. says, oh, here's a location yep. I can go. Yeah, uh, it is uh, donated by Tesla, so that would be in the Tesla website. So any Tesla owner and any electric uh, vehicle owner would know that there's a station here and uh, would be uh, inclined to visit us, uh, you know, take advantage of all the amenities that Bethel can offer. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. The, uh, 
it's not the charging system, but you alluded to the fact that you were working on energy for the fire department in the town hall. Oh, yeah, that's in the works, uh, Dave. Uh, we're not ready to present yet, but uh, okay. right. there are vendors that are working on giving us solutions as far as uh, uh, photovoltaics, uh, roof mounted, and that's another animal. You know, we, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it soon. I'd like to hear what those are before we get too You'll hear that soon. So, do these have the availability for somebody to use a credit card on? Not the dump stations, no. Option yeah. one, anybody can come, plug their car in, whether it's a Tesla or a Nissan Leaf, and walk out of here for free, yeah. no questions asked. Do they make an upgrade that has that available? The, the car part? Uh, oh, yeah, there are charging stations. That, that's the second option I was going to go with. Oh. That, that they do that. They have a app that with your cell phone you can pay, et cetera. Yeah. So that would be the second, the second option. The second option is uh, uh, $6,800. Uh, that's one charging station that is similar one, but who would pay for it? And uh, the money would be charged for by, the, co the consumer will pay uh, like a regular charging station like you see everywhere. And that, uh, the money will be uh, obviously uh, collected by Green Mountain Power, and I would have to investigate what the town will, will have if there's any uh, you know, particular percentage that we will take because we are donating this, the parking space. And again, it's about $6,800 with a $1,500 credit that Green Mountain Power gives us. We'll give a cost of $5,300, but if it is used a lot, we will be recovering that money with a, with a certain payback, which again, I haven't calculated. Uh, if you guys like that option, I can definitely run the numbers and bring it to you. But that will be a very simple, kind of relatively cheap. However, I don't believe that we have a uh, $6,000 budget this year to do that. We would have to approve it you know, for obvious reasons, right? Are there any grants out there available? That's the third option. <laughs> yes, any, any questions on the second option? Third option is Volkswagen. I don't know if you remember Volkswagen at the backhoe. They they were cheating on the emissions test. Part of the settlement is to install charging stations everywhere, and we're going to be eligible. So the grant is coming in Thanksgiving, Christmas time. So we want to apply, but we don't want to do that unless you guys say, you know what, we do like the idea of a charging station. Apply for the grant. We would have to. Uh, invest uh, money on the uh, panel and bring in the electricity to the station. But the station will be free, provided by the Volkswagen uh, grant. And we could get more than one problem. Now, would that be a, uh, a freebie for the, for the charger or for or pay? It would be paid. The charger? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it will be a paid one. It will be a, a, smart, a smart station that you will be. Uh, you know, if you don't have a way to pay, you won't be able to take juice from it, okay. you know? The, the only one that is like that is the first case scenario, the dumb one is, you know, it's just so pure. The third option also, is that? The three, it could be, depending on how much we approve, we, we can, I don't know exactly the details of the grant, but uh, we can definitely be uh, looking at more than one. And each station is actually double sided yeah. Fuel tank, mm -hmm. like gas tank. So yeah. one is really two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very small RV country. Yeah. 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 So with that, just uh, want to ask what the board feels, uh, how it all thinks, what, how, what, which, you know, uh, uh, which, uh, which option do you like best? I, I think that option one is a little impractical. For the town to take on a, a debt like that, um, I think that just mm -hmm. with all the things we have going on at this point, I think mm -hmm. that's just a little too much. It's almost a penny on the tax rate. Um, this, this second and third option, I think, are possibilities, but we need to have a lot more information, mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot more documentation, and numbers, and some harder figures, some diagrams, you know, a little yep. more, a lot more information. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. There must be some information about out there about people who have these stations 
And how much are they being used now? Yeah, it is, they're not used very much, uh, but uh, they're ramping up. Uh, they're trying to get uh, the horse before the cart, uh, before they're building all these electric vehicles, they want to have the infrastructure, but... Uh, no, what about that? Yeah, the one in Edel Edelstein, maybe? No, uh, Dan, hmm. okay, Christian House. Okay. He's got a Chevy Bolt. Mm -hmm. That's the only one I know about. Yeah, it, it is sort of like the future, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Understood. The worst case scenario is two parks parked there for 10 hours out of 15,000. Oh, that, that, that's not going to happen now, but it might happen in the next five, six years, you know. And uh, well, I think the other concern is we're already pinched for parking. You know, that's, a, that's always a concern downtown. Yeah. So it's have to be, you have to look at that consideration also. If we run a tie up two spots. Um, yeah, it would be free of charge because we have grants and money to install. And if what Mo suggests, just having an honor system box, we would recover the money. So the, but it would be a risk. So, you know. I would think folks that, that folks that have an electric car would be willing to slide a credit card in mm -hmm. to take the charge. Yeah. I don't think they would have a big problem with it. I'm, I'm definitely all for it. I think that, you know, what I'm hearing here is similar. The town shouldn't be seeing the cost of electric for it. I don't think it would be a 15000 right off the bat. You know, that's sort of, like you said, it's the worst case scenario. But, um, you know, I also think Dave's, Dave's point of there's only one person in Bethel, but we're actually, I see this as something for, not for Bethel residents, it's actually a way to bring yeah. people into Bethel, and there are a lot of electric cars coming out of Canada, and we see Quebec plates all the time, and I've noticed a number, you know, it, a notable increase in electric cars that have Canadian plates, and if they're already on the move and traveling, they're maybe more likely to spend, and if they're willing to spend some of that money here because they're spending some time here that does ultimately, you know, it benefits the town overall. Should it be done at the cost of us paying the electric for it? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you have definitely two options that we could pursue that wouldn't mm -hmm. cost the town. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little more like work on the front end and more expense yep. from, you know, either from grants or from the town. But could the pad be set up on the uh, white church parking lot? Is it close enough? It's on power, yeah. Power is the only key. There's three phase right there. Is there? I mean, that might be an option. I don't know if you've seen the phase. Is it on the same phase? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you put it, really, because if you do it here, you're going to have to have a whole new service. If you put it here, you're going to have a whole new service. Or if you put it downtown, you're going to have to have the whole thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Could, what is the screen on the piece? Somewhere in that area. There be, do they pull enough power that there might be a viable spot somewhere in there? Green Mountain Peaks, you said. Yeah. yeah. The big three, big line, the peaks, you definitely come right through there, so there's plenty of power. Uh, is there, I don't know what's towns, what's there. I don't know if there's I'm wondering anything. if there's a spot in them. Because that's, you know, when we're talking about parking issues, we're talking a little more on this half of the downtown than on that half, and even if it were. You know, I don't know if there's a way to get it just off the road enough that we can do something closer to the road. That, or the parallel working is difficult because it's, it's a bubble side thing. Right. So you need right. on both sides. So you almost have to be out of the like, center of mm -hmm. the yeah. application. There's one parking lot down that I hardly see a vehicle on. I can't down on, but the uh, library. I have, when's the last time I saw a car in there? Well, those are things that these are all questions. Yeah, to really look at the road. I think what Jose is looking for is, do you, are you are you interested in possibly hearing more? You are. No, option one. No, option one. I mean, oh, <laughs> try option one. Understand? Yes. Uh, so we'll we'll pursue option two and three then, and. Uh, you know, give you a, a, a more more information, more detailed information, diagrams, etc. And you, uh, how about the location? Are you guys okay with that location or, or not? Well, let's leave the location up in the air at this point. I mean, okay. You know, you're gonna have to put the service in one way. Right. Right. We would have to drop it down. Can you can you 
continue to move forward on options two and three without knowing the definitive location, or do you need? No, no, because as Dave mentioned, the the power to GW goes here. There's plenty of power. Unless we choose to have it at somewhere in the middle of nowhere, then they may be, but um, we're, we're talking about Bethel, right? right. Downtown area, so. Um, I'd also be curious, and maybe Dave, you have some insight on this. Um, while you're pursuing solar, is that an option for setting up a solar panel on this charging station that would feed back? And yeah. It might not be enough to feed the station itself, but would that be some sort of offset? When I hear from the uh, uh, studies we're doing that, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, and maybe it's a little earlier to discuss, but uh, if we were to put solar panels uh, in the roof here, in this building, it will more than cover the power for this building, which is about $200 a, uh, a month or something like that, and uh, the sewer pump. It will cover most of that power. So it would definitely cover a charging station, without a doubt, because just, just that, yeah, that, that solution. Look at, uh, you know, down the road here. Maybe try to wrap up a little bit. If you want, just if you want to look at it, go down to Moscow Park, and then they have a uh, solar panel system that you can put on that would be much more efficient than the one that we have here. Yeah, four-vehicle solar charging station. Four, four charges to where? Vermont Law School. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that, yeah. yeah. Right, thank you. No problem. Thank, thank you very much. Well, Dave, keep, keep in touch with us as far as what your, what your energy committee is up, you know, some minutes. Yep. You know, maybe once a month or whatever, or once every couple of Yeah, we are. Uh, so we kind of keep tabs on what we're okay. going to go We'll do so. Okay. We'll do it. Thank you. Have a good one. Well, thank you. Well. I appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> Can't live without it. H2O. So, Kevin, yeah, thank you for being so patient. We're, we're a little bit off schedule here, but All right. you are up. Uh, I just, a year ago, I think I came uh, in front of the board and discussed some tax stabilization ideas and uh, about the velocity block. And uh, my research, Back then, I talked to an administrator from Hyde Park that they had done that a couple different times. And the way I understand it is it's a, it's a town-wide vote. Uh, the way they did it in, um, in, in Hyde Park was the, the way they wrote it on the town meeting ballot was you could either uh, do it per, per building or they just voted to allow the select board to negotiate it, to, to give them the power to, to deal with it, um, which seems a little less cumbersome to me. But what I'm worried about with the Blossom Block is, um, and, and there's no great big hurry on this because the tax, the tax bill is set, the value is set for the next four quarters as it is. But we're putting so much money into it and we're getting, we're getting more rents out of it as, as each piece comes online. And what would not be economically viable is if it went from zero to 60 in a matter of one or two years. So if the, if the listers came in and looked at it and said it went from, I don't, I don't know what they have it on the grand list for now, it's not a lot. Um, but if it went from that to $500,000 in a couple of years, it would not be economically viable. Um, so, I'm not asking not to pay any taxes. All I'm asking for is that it's stepped uh, and that there's some way we can budget for the next four, five years so that we know about what things will be. Questions? So you're, you're asking, you, you'd like it to, you know, it's at a certain rate right now, and instead of jumping quickly, you'd like it to go incrementally, but be set now, or within the next year or two, prior to all the renovations being done, but be set at those increments, right. eventually to get up to what the listeners will put it at. Yeah. But instead of doing that jump, all Correct. Yeah. Now, how often do they come in 
The listers? Yeah, how, 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 how many times have they been in Nashville? I know they came in once when I first bought it. First they came. Yeah. What's that? They, they should go in when Yeah, they, they, they came in then. I, and I don't think they've come back. They can't really do anything until there's a reappraisal now, I believe. Am I correct? They can do, well, they can adjust it on it. Yeah. And, uh, every year they'll, they'll reassess, if they will, based on whatever whatever it is, repair and renovations mm -hmm. and resuming. That's that game. So. And can they request to go back they in the building and do they can, Well, they can request to, to request to come in. To, to, to go in the building each year to reassess. Sure. I think they've got the. One of the challenges is that we're having to front load a whole lot of costs and improvements, uh, like the 50 yards of concrete for the foundation, the roof, and in the next uh, the next phase, which will happen hopefully around the first of the year, an elevator and the uh, sprinkler system will have to go in. So those are big costs that would push the value of the building up uh, without getting any benefit from those for another year or two as, as we get the rest of the building online. Well, it's something we can certainly look into. I, I don't think we have any regulations or any established uh, methods right now other than the listers. We'll have to see, yeah, what the state statute, if it talks about it. We'll, we'll okay, to talk to the list, I'll talk to the because I think the value would have to be set is just how the assessment is made, the tax assessment is made. Because um, every year they've got to reassign, they've got to reassess it and, and assess it and value to it. I don't know, we'll have to talk about it. I, 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 maybe, I mean, because you're going to phase all this anyway, right? Like, what is your, when you, when, how long are you going to phase things, do you think, before you're completed with the bill as a whole? Oh, it's a, Tell them, Dad. Yeah. So I wonder if they if they're doing a reassessment every year and it's only a small portion of what has been of, of the building because only a small portion is completed, maybe that allows us to kind of step I, that step. I think in practice that's correct. Yeah. What I'm worried about is if there's some big change and that the the practice all of a sudden says, hey, we really need to pump up the grant right. list and we're going to take this building from, you know, from 100000 to five or $600,000. Right. So. And again, I'm not, I'm not asking not to pay any taxes. I'm just right. asking that we step it so that we can budget and, and get the building online. It's almost, just an, almost an agreement for a predetermined, predefined yeah. in, step increase. In a lot of, in a, some of the bigger towns, um, Claremont, New Hampshire, Win Springfield um, in southern Windsor County, did it when they, a lot of times the town would get the mill buildings back, they'd sell them to a developer for a dollar and, and give them tax stabilization for five to ten years so that they could get the building back online and invest a lot of money. Uh, and so just on a very smaller scale, Something like that would be really beneficial to, to the Blossom Block and the, the continued uh, economic development of downtown. We can certainly get oh yeah. Yeah. We can certainly get with the listers and see, look at the statutes and see. Because then, then the other curveball is if we have another time line reappraisal that gets triggered somewhere along the line and how that may impact it. Yeah. Um, well, and it sounds like from your research at least, but I guess we'll have to find this out, is that essentially we'd be looking at making some sort of decision at town meeting day, either the town as a whole making you know, voting on it or the town giving permission to select for it to that. So, so I guess where I'm going with this is there's a bit of a timeline, and you're trying to get ahead of that timeline. The timeline would be town meeting. Yeah, yes. getting us yes. aware of it, getting us to do That's our side of the research, Negotiate all of that side and then have it in time for time meeting. So that's that's essentially what you're yeah. asking. Yeah. So there's there's state regs on all the statute on and all that. So uh, and you said Springfield. Is there anybody else that you're aware of? Uh, 
Uh, they did it in Hyde Park, and that was the administrator that I talked to was in Hyde Park. Uh, and he was referred to me through one of my contacts, okay. historic preservation of the different people in the state. Okay. So, the research and bring it back. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, so moving on to report questions and ordinances, we had the green lantern release. Chris Noble with the Royal Oh, that's right. Yeah. I really like your digs here. This is a fantastic town hall. So. Thank you. Wouldn't consider trading, would you? Yeah. Hey, that's right. There you go. Yeah, the cost of moving that might be uh, yeah. might be some. Can I move up here? Sure. Sure. Courtesy for the Green Lantern Project. If you have any questions, how we came to our decision before it's said for me to be here. Yeah, just Chris is here. Our Chris. Yeah, your your Chris Jarvis is here. Right. The two Chris's. So we'll be here. <laughs> so I did get a chance to sit with Chris and go over um, the a bunch of folks who went through the negotiation um, work, and we appreciate you taking the time. Dive in there and, and uh, make some change, some changes. Yeah, I think nothing significantly significant. But, uh, so we had, does everybody have a copy? You've seen the copy, you've had a chance to look at it, digest it a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there, were, there were four, um, there were four changes that were highlighted uh, in there. One was a change in the length of term uh, to 25 years instead of 20 years with basically unlimited renewals. Um, it's established at a 25 year with, I believe, two five year uh, renewal terms with the consent of both the owners and the, uh, the tenants and the uh, owners. There was a slight increase in the dollar figure for rent in the later years. Um, and what was the other? Is it the installment payments? Is that yeah, that's what I meant. The, uh, the installment rent payments were increased in the, in the okay. later years. Sorry, that they were that are shifted to quarterly. What was it? Was that in there before? Yeah, no, that wasn't. Change in the length of term uh, to two uh, exercise of five year options to extend the lease must be agreed on by all parties. That's uh, one change. The initial term is changed from 20 to 25. The annual rent for the years 21 to 25 is 4250. Uh, that's a slight increase, that was 4000 or something like that. And then the option periods. Uh, 26 through 30 and 31 through 35 do not have a specified annual rent of being negotiated by our kids. <laughs> yes. So maybe you, <laughs> you folks. Um, so those are the four changes that were made to the. Uh, are there any questions? So what we're going to do, um, Chris is going to executive session. Okay. And just have a discussion that should come out and vote. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Can Chris be in our session? Hi. It's up to you. You can invite all you want to invite in. You might have a chance to answer your question. Yeah, I don't have a problem. Anybody have a question? Yeah, of course. Honor your confidentiality. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And you know, we worked on this quite a bit. Too. So that we had several executive sessions. Okay, so I guess we'll uh, need a we'll entertain a motion to go to the executive session and do a little short. So we'll, we'll then we'll come out and make a decision. All in favor? All right. All right.
Okay, so I would entertain a motion to approve the Green Lantern lease agreement. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay, so we need to vote. Yeah. You want to do it by paper? Yeah, let's do it by paper. Thanks, Chris. I would. Yeah. Okay, next item is a Green Mountain Power Easement request, which goes along with the installation of the solar project right. at the transfer station. Yep. So this is the revised easement that um, Green Mountain Power have come to us with. They've, they've finally come up and figured out exactly where they can run the lines that will work okay with Chet. Uh, at the facility and we'll, we'll kind of be the, the best, I guess, scenario for everybody. So this is just the easement that goes along with that. If, if you look at the original documents uh, in, the, in the contract you just signed, there was a map in there that showed some easements and some uh, preliminary spots for these lines to go. Those were not going to work because they were in violation of our SWIP, uh, yeah. among other things. Uh, so this is the revision based on kind of Chet uh, walking the site with Green Mountain Power uh, as to where they're going to place their poles. Okay. All right. And this is just basically um, so we're, the authority to sign. So we're authorizing you yes. to uh, be our authorized yes. agent. Okay. You have any questions? No? Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to authorize Greg to sign this uh, easement. So move. I'll second that one. There you go. <laughs> All, in sure so <laughs> All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Okay. So, Greg, you take care of that. Thank you very much.
Okay, so next item, minutes of communications. Uh, we know that the, the select board minutes. Yeah, my apologies, they um, missed the packet. Yeah. So we'll bring them back next time. So we'll just table that until, uh, table that until next, next meeting. Next meeting, we'll get up in there. Okay. You're off for the week. Yeah, how does that work in the <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what you do next meeting. meeting. You get, <laughs> yeah, right. that's one point We're on so your. good, we didn't have to. I know. <laughs> one point on your side of the way. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got the uh, town manager's uh, administration report. Yep. Uh, so a couple things in your packet. The preliminary year-end budget is in there. I'll, I'll uh, field any questions on that. Teresa's on vacation, but I'm sure I can do it. Um, I think we did a really good job working off of a budget that we weren't real sure with and real confident in last year. Um, if you look at the end of the day, which is what I'm looking at, we're actually uh, on the right side of the coin on this. So this is very preliminary. So, mm -hmm. you know. That was one of my questions was how, how much more to come is there? Very little, really. It's okay. just when she says that, she means, you know, it, it hasn't gone through the, the official channels um, mm. she's, she, everything's in uh, as far as we know there might be a couple things that are kind of trickling in here and there but no but the, the, the payables are all done 99 percent of the bills all done, that we think are that like that. we're out there are in yeah. so uh, i think we're real close when do the audits uh I, the audit i think is scheduled in september or october i believe you have, we'll have to get out to ask me, but i think it's real soon uh, mm -hmm. so we'll see yeah, we'll see what happens. We, we took a budget that we thought was a little bit tough, and everybody did a really good job. I, I think everybody did a really good job. Yeah. So some of the things you'll see in here are some costs of, that we're not budgeted for that mm -hmm. kind of put us over the top on a few items um, that we've rectified in our new budget. And we'll continue to make changes to our budget until we get everything covered like it should be. But um, So take a look. If you have any questions, I can... I can Definitely answer them for you. I'd be curious, Greg, if we could at some point do a comparison or some an analysis of the. I know it's very early in the new position, um, you know, category, the new position that we uh, instituted, to see what the net net of that position versus what we we're hoping to have for savings of outside for the, for the sure. costs around town you know maybe. things like that. I know it's kind of early to do that, right. but. Yeah, we'll definitely have just to do that come some, year in. Yeah, yeah, something just to say, yeah, it, it you know. It yeah, yeah, let sense. me get through a snow season, because yeah. that's where we're going to see the savings, yeah. I think. Um, let me get through that, and we can do that next year for sure. Mm. We'll put something together. Remind me, and we'll put something yeah. together, if you guys can remind me. We'll do something that, yeah. so after he's been here a full year, and, and see what we were actually, what we had paid the year before, and then what we got for and then look at it and see if it's are we yeah. getting the same services or, are we getting or even maybe or just less? you know six months out it just to yeah do a ballpark thing uh, i think we can't. also another part of that is it's not completely fair to look at it dollar for dollar because i really feel that we're getting more for the money that we're spending um, yeah there's intangibles that, that right, have a right. dollar but we can definitely look at it and dollar. just see if, if we're getting if it is costing us any more or if it's if it's working the mm -hmm. way thought it would because that would be a good thing yeah. also to have for town meeting you know you could sure. show show these kinds of things that yeah. these yeah, things that, that we're doing to uh, improve right yeah. sure sure we can do that yeah. are there any questions about the year end budget i don't did chris have any comments did you hear from chris at all chris is, <laughs> no. he's, he's outside of yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where he is, too. And plus the numbers came. <laughs> you know, I, I was real happy to see. You know, we had some things that we overspent, but yep. uh, all in all, at the end of the day, we were on the right side of, the, of this. So uh, I think that's big kudos to all of my people for really watching their budget and being aware of what's going on and, and not just spending because they could. Well, it's good to have a it's good to have a qualified driver behind the wheel, too. Yeah. I mean, it's not, oh, yeah. you know, it's not just... It's everybody, yeah. you know, from you and Therese right on down through. And I think we're just going to continue to refine it as we really get numbers that are that are correct. And, you know, it may be that we actually overstated some of our budget items last year. We'll have to see. But um, mm -hmm. I'm glad that this came in close and didn't. It wasn't yeah. completely off the wall one way or another. That yeah. would really yeah. be a, a problem. Yeah. So, well, yeah, good for everybody. There are no questions? All right. 
So my staff report is also in your packet. Uh, just a couple quick little highlights. Uh, I gotta put my glasses on. I bought some of these. Walmart special? Yeah, I couldn't see it before. Uh, so we uh, applied for and received a passive grant. Um, this is a, uh, a grant through our insurance company, of course, and they they give us, uh, will give us money for safety oriented type things. So we bought a trench box because we were installing fire hydrants and lines and things. We didn't have the trench box like we should. Um, the road crew are getting new cones and flare, not flares, cones and flasher beacons and some other safety related type things. And they're also, they also got some t-shirts uh, that were class three t-shirts. Um, and it was a, a 90, 10 grant. So we got, um, like five thousand, ten thousand dollars worth of stuff. No, I think it was a fifty-fifty grant. I'm sorry, ten thousand dollars worth of stuff for five thousand um, dollars. It was stuff we had budgeted to buy anyway. Most of it, we just got twice as much. So um, we we actually apply for this grant every year. Uh, a lot of times it goes to the fire department because they can buy safety related equipment with it too. Mm -hmm. um, and we will apply for it next year and, and kind of see what we use it. But if you see the guys out with some new cones and. and and wearing some new shirts and stuff, that's why. Uh, the wastewater asset analysis, uh, this started before I had started. Uh, this was similar to what the uh, what they had done with the water system. Uh, it's kind of a precursor to a master plan. Uh, we had, uh, I believe, uh, Du Bois and King, I think that's who did it. Uh, they, they looked at our system and, and they basically mapped all of our system and they looked at the age of our system and they kind of did a real preliminary um, capital improvement plan that basically says that based on the typical shelf life of a, of a, a motor, it should die at this time. It allows us to kind of plan for the future. We did one of these with our water system three, two, three years ago, um, and it wasn't quite on the level of our master plan that we're working on now, but it was a kind of a, an, an initial thing. Um, key to this is that it's free. This was all paid for through another grant that we've gotten, um, so we didn't pay a dime for this one. Uh, I did reach out to uh, Mrs. Placey and met with her about the gravel pit. Uh, I originally had talked about not doing that pit, but then I, I kind of really delved into the numbers and looked at what it was going to cost us, and I think it's going to be in our best interest to possibly try to get that going again. Uh, the permit is still valid. It's valid for another, I believe, seven years, seven years, uh, but it's still valid. And um, there's some work we'd have to do down there, of course, like some remediation work with the topsoil and all that, but yeah. that has to get done yeah, never, regardless. It never got done. Never got done anyway. to, we Yeah, so I uh, had a real good discussion with her. I actually sent her a, uh, a contract to look at it and see if she's interested in it. Um, charging the uh, same amount as what we were being charged with last time we did it, which was I think $5 a yard for the material. Mm -hmm. So if she's still okay with that price. She, um, she wanted a closet that said we could, could revisit that year after year, which is fine. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm hoping that she's okay with that and she brings that back to us and we can we can get moving on it. Uh, I've already talked to the crushers and they are tentatively scheduled. So if this does work out, we can hopefully get in there in the fall and start crushing some material. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, the we talked about Morgan a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to put out there that I think he's doing a fantastic job. I, I really like, you know, he's doing a lot of mowing. He's keeping up with all these, these green spaces. Um, I haven't gotten any complaints at all about what he's been doing, and I haven't gotten anything either way, really. So I was just curious if, if you had heard anything or if you had any, any concerns, comments, anything with the position that we might might want to look at, because this is new, so I want to kind of grow it into to what it really needs to be in the future. But um, have you well, heard anything? Have you seen anything? I, I'm wondering how uh, are we continuing to pursue his certification stuff with the water and sewer. Oh, yeah. He spends part of his time is in water and sewer. Right. Yeah, he actually, um, he's actually part of his budget, what he gets paid, mm -hmm. comes out of water and sewer. So right. he's getting paid. He's, if, he's, if he's spending a lot of time doing the mowing and those kinds of mm -hmm. things, is he still able to keep up with yes. his studies, if you will? Yes. And it's going to uh, be a little, a little <coughs> seasonal because he'll have, a, you know, in the summer it's going to be mow, 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 and the winter's probably going to be a lot of plowing, and then you've got those dead times in between where he'll do a lot of the sewer and the water. Uh, he does the rounds for the water system every so he's out checking the wells and he does it every day uh, and then he helps uh, Tim out whenever he needs help doing something at the where wherever actually anywhere so we had him slated uh, at 15 percent water and sewer and I think he's exceeding that already we'll have to see 
you know, for the whole year what it looks like. But uh, we only had him at 50%. So he was doing 50% water. He was doing some come out of the wreck because he was working at the pool and doing some mowing at the wreck fields. Some of his, his pay was coming out of the highways and in some out of sewer. He was going from four or five different places. And uh, uh, I think we're staying fairly close to that. Uh, we'll have to see after the entire year is over. But uh, a large portion is still coming from the highway department, <coughs> mowing from the highway department, um, just because, uh, or the plowing, I'm sorry, plowing from the highway department because we spent a lot of money there last year. Yeah. And I foresee him spending a lot of time plowing this winter. If the guys are plowing, he'll be plowing as well. Well, you've also got a new hire there. Mm -hmm. So that's another person. Well, the way it worked to, out was the new person to. didn't, the, the new position was, was created, but it wasn't funded. It was already funded. It was funded by taking all of these different things that we used to sub out and bring them all in house. And that's what, that's what paid, if you will, for that new position. So we're at full staff, which is essentially five people. We've got the four plus the float position. Um, but it wasn't, there wasn't an increase at all with that. What right. I did is right. I took all the, all the subbed out things mm -hmm. and brought those all in-house. The plowing, the, the mowing, mm -hmm. um, the pool stuff, all that is, is all in-house now. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it's kind of just yet to see what happens with this. You know, give us some time. I like your idea of looking at it and seeing if it hasn't been, you know, is it worth what we're doing or, or is subbing this, mm -hmm. these, these tasks out the way to go? I don't know. But um, this was really just the intent here was just to garner some feedback from anybody. Um, good or bad, you know, if you're hearing anything on the streets about no, no. what he's been doing. I don't know if you saw, he put the covers on the trash cans. He gonna, built those covers for those trash cans. I was going to say, the only the only comment or complaint I've heard or would have had prior to the last week or two was the trash that, especially with the uptick of people yeah. in downtown, especially with the summer, but in general, the trash is getting full and then it's remaining full and over starting to overflow. Yeah. But that actually hasn't been the case in the last couple right. of weeks. And so I was sort of thinking, oh, I should really bring this up to Greg. And then it all of a sudden right. became a non-issue. We were seeing so much residential, big bags of, you know, big bags of trash. Somebody's right. house, household trash and right. those things. So that's why he built that. Plus, they were getting full of water. So that that had a top on it keeps the rain out. Plus, it hopefully, it's only six inches wide. Yeah. keeps people from sticking all their household trash in there. So, mm -hmm. so you have that one, I think we addressed right. that. Yep. Okay. You know, this is a, a learning process, this whole position, and I want to just get as, as much feedback as I can from whoever, everybody, so that we can make it into what it needs to be. I'm a little curious, and, and you may not know this yet, some of it may sort of figure itself out in the winter. Um, when you say that he'll be plowing, are there designated areas like he's going to be doing sort of the downtown stuff or you know things like that or is it he'll also be helping well both um so alan has redone the plow rods and just tweaked them a little bit to make them a little more efficient um so he has his own plow rod which is okay. essentially uh, that's why we bought the smaller pickup without the king cab and all that stuff on it so that it can navigate these side roads this parking lot all those areas where you you really couldn't get up in there really easily with that that one ton of the wing um, so it's, that's really where he's going to be in a typical storm. That's where he'll be. He'll be doing, he'll be on the little van tracks thing, doing the sidewalks. He'll be on a loader, cleaning out the downtown area. He'll be doing the side streets, the parking lot, all of the kind of paved downtown part. Um, and maybe even some of the, the paved roads further up, like North Road and, and whatever. Um, but also it's, it, it's if we, it's kind of a security blanket so that if we have the one time go down, which it did all last year, it seemed like. He can jump on the route and he can go do some of the other roads. Now, he won't be able to, be able to do them as efficiently, um, but it's another plow that's available that, that he can do some of this stuff with. So, um, so yes, and no. Yeah. You know, he's really a, he's a security blanket for the bigger trucks and the bigger routes, but he's, he's primarily he's going to be downtown doing the smaller side roads and the parking lot and the, the parking spaces on the road. Yeah. Yeah. So let me know. Let me know what you hear. Mm -hmm. Good or bad. Yep. Uh, that's that's all I've got. Unless you've got any questions for me. The folks that were in at the last meeting about the class three road up on Slack Hill. Mm -hmm. What? So can you give us uh, an so update I, on that? Yeah, sure. I went up there and took a look. Um, I've got a little bit more to do, but Alan and I drove that road. Um, the it's a very very nice road. Um, they've put a lot of road base on it. They've done some drainage work to it. It's it needs. Doesn't have a turnaround at all. Um, 
that's probably the biggest issue with the road is it doesn't have a, a large turnaround area uh, on town property for the trucks. The only way, excuse me, the only way that uh, Alan thought that they could turn around would be to drive all the way from the driveway and back out and come back down, which is not, it's probably 400 feet. It's, it's, it's a ways up there. It's not just turn around right there in the driveway. Um, so there is no turn around. <coughs> Um, they could build one. I think there's a way that they could work, but they would have to build it. Um, there's a little bit of drainage issues with some of the slopes that are steep that, that we would require rock lining and things like that. And um, the entrance has some issues as, as well. It's a little narrow and you extend the culvert and put some more backfill in there. Um, we've got those three things. I'm going to come back. I'd like to go back and do a really close look at it, but I, and it's narrow. So there's a, really those four things. But, my intent was to go back out there when I get a chance and take some pictures so that I could kind of do a more formal presentation to the board um, and we can see what you want to do as far as moving forward. Uh, there's only one primary access off of it. There's the, their driveway at the end of it. The other accesses are just somebody's backyard. They just built a, a little access point from their, you know, to the back. Their main access is all on the front. But um, I will take some pictures and do a little more and bring you a small presentation to, okay. to show you where we're at with it. And was it still in the schedule to do that work on Slack Hill, the culvert work and whatnot that you were at the bottom of their road that you were talking all about? Done. It's all done. Yeah, go out there and check it out. Oh, okay. That's great. cool. Looks great. Yeah. All right. Um, check. Check it out. Check that one out. Yes, I got one. Yes. Put that in there, would you? That's good. Um, <coughs> So yeah, I'll just bring back more to you. Um, it doesn't meet the requirements, honestly, of a of a a class three road if somebody was to come in with a subdivision. Because when you have a subdivision, we can really outline this is exactly what we want. It doesn't meet that, but honestly, it's it doesn't. Neither do a lot of our roads. If you really look at it, they don't they don't meet it. They're they're, they're very narrow. Um, this has got really good road base. So anyway, I'll put all that together yeah. and I'll bring it okay. back to you so okay. you can take a look and figure out what you want. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions for Greg? No? Put him on the hot seat? No. You should check out Slack Hill. It's good. Yeah, it's yeah. Good. yeah, cool. Okay. Okay, we've had the uh, constable's report. Everybody had a chance to peruse that. Looks like he's doing a good job. And we, yeah, if you could maybe chat with him about. I will do that. Problem is when you see a cruiser sitting up there, everybody's going to slow down. <laughs> That's the same thing. He well, sits. But isn't that the end goal? Is well, yeah, but he's only going to sit there for an hour or so. And yeah, but you don't know when it's going to be there. I mean, right. Right. Personally, that they had that uh, portable speed sign down in the town of Royalton, or North Royalton, whatever you want to call it. It was there for like mm. two months, but I, even now, I am conscious when I go down through there. I do. Yeah. I need to be 30, 35. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I think about it on North Road when I was commuting to Woodstock and Bridgewater. Because they, they'd sit on that road. They wouldn't sit on 12. And so I watch my speed more closely on North Road if I'm on 12. And so, yeah, I think it, it may still have some benefit. Yeah, I think that's a real good idea, actually, to put those solar signs. I mean, not solar signs, the, the, the speed the, signs. Yeah. Uh, up there. For the yeah. It's just a question of conditioning. You've got to be a little uh, careful on how remote they are because they could come up missing. Yeah, that's another. That's another <laughs> one. Yeah, you'd have to try pretty hard, but I'm sure anybody can. Yeah. Saw yeah. saw be taken yeah. pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, you're, you're right. You know, we've, we're looking at buying a couple more. We've got some grant money coming that Mark That did. one that they had in, in Royalton, is that, they rent that? or? I think they bought that. Is that the trailer? Yeah, yeah, it was like so, a and that is an option. We could, we have this money coming that Mark got from doing DUI enforcement, and that's one of the things we could buy. I thought that about doing fixed location speed signs, like by the school, mm. but we could purchase a speed trailer. I, I'm not sure how much they cost and how much money yeah, we have. Know, but might be something to look at. That might be something that we look at. Take a look at. It. If we buy, Mark told me he bought one. He got one for one of his other towns. If we, we buy some trailer. more, what we got, we ought to spend the long dollar and get the solar. 
charger on top. Yeah, they have, they have it's almost more expensive. It's almost the same price to retrofit those Is than it? to buy the whole thing. So my thought is that with the money we have, I think we can buy two. Yeah. I want to get two fixed locations with solar panels, and then yeah. these other two will move around because they're battery So they'll be able to mm -hmm. just kind of yeah. move around. We'll post one over here, that's the one that's there. Yeah. That will stay. We'll put a, a fixed location there because that's a good spot for that. Yep. And then another maybe fixed location I bought out by the school yep. coming into town, and then we can move these other guys around because they're just, just battery operated. Because the solar, so the solar will save us on batteries. Right. Yeah. And the batteries are such a pain. We, yep. we looked at doing a retrofit to, from battery to solar on those, yep. and it's oh, it's not worth the money. Might as well buy them. Yeah. Should just buy a new one. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. We have uh, minutes from the Bethel Recreation Committee. Um, looks like they had a fairly extensive discussion about the skateboard park and whatnot. And uh, are you there, Greg? Do you have anything to add to? Um, well, I, 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 told, I told them what I told you, that um, yeah. there was a conditional use permit for the rec facility done like three years ago, and it expired after two years. So technically, the permit for the rec facility as a whole is not valid. Um, I told them that, and they, they actually they took it as kind of a, an opportunity to possibly make some changes to the, the facility down there, the design. Uh, the design was never approved by the people. It didn't have to be. It was actually approved um, by zoning they, and the board. The board mm -hmm. at some point said, we like that, take it to zoning. Went to zoning and it passed and it was okay. Um, but now it's not valid, so they're looking at, at seeing if they can move some stuff around to accommodate all the same elements, but keep some of the green space and make things so that because there's been a lot of, of kind of i would say backlash but you know mm -hmm. noise yeah. uh, yeah. about if we put all those things in there we're going to lose that hill we're going to lose that whole big field and they're going to try to get rid of get away from it um, so that's kind of where they're at with that is they're going to mm -hmm. go they're going back to that whole design now and looking to see how those elements might get moved around and, and come back to you with another concept mm -hmm. that then we'll go back to zone. Hmm. Yeah, they're talking about a gazebo, possibly. Yeah, there is somebody in town that's um, heritage they build, builders. Yeah. They want to, yeah, they want to yeah. build a gazebo for free. Um, hmm. It's uh, it's a big structure, but it's not a permanent structure, so it doesn't necessarily have to be part of the, the rec master plan right, because right, it's not a permanent right. structure. It's not a permanent structure. Uh, it can be moved to different places, but it's uh, it's a nice big thing. It's it's really nice. It's all well, free. I'm glad to see that they're uh, re-examining the skateboard concept and yeah uh, yeah and they're going to try to you know, they took the parameters that the board gave them and they're trying to work with that and make it happen yeah. uh, and then they're also looking at the fees uh the pool fees oh yeah so um that kind of got tabled a little bit because the discussion was long with the other but they're going to have the next meeting go back and revisit the, yeah. uh, the potential because it looks like it looks like randolph's pool they not open again. It might be. You know, I mean, it yeah. uh, might be dead. So they're going to come back, uh, hopefully after the next meeting, and have their idea and their recommendation on what we ought to set the All right. Any other business? Come before the board. So I'll entertain a motion that we go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? 